I'm here today with Jeremiah Walt, son of Sir Reginald Walt. Welcome. Thank you. Today we're looking at Operation Battle Axe, of which your father took part. Yes, that's right. Operation Battle Axe was the British operation launched in June 1941 under the command of General Sir Archibald Wavell to relieve the besieged Allied forces of Tobruk. Tell us about Sir Walt. Uh, Sir Reginald was the sniper and squad leader for Charlie's squad. It wasn't often that he spoke about what he did during the war. I'm sure for many people involved in it, it was a horrific time of their lives, but his actions and beliefs during this time are what characterised him later in life. Allied forces had become trapped in the town of Tobruk, and it was the decision of high command that the enemy siege needed to be lifted in order to secure safe passage of hardware and supplies to the African campaign. This mission was called Operation Battleaxe and the start of it took place in the Halfaya Pass. Charlie Squad was assigned to the first wave of paratroopers in order to spearhead the assault against the German Africa Corps. Their objective? To destroy German artillery emplacements so that the Allied forces could create a forward base of operations. Paratrooping into the combat zone, Reginald was quick to select his squad's first position to assault and he took the view that securing a flank and moving into the center would be the best way to go as this stretched the German defensive lines and allowed the Allies to bring more troops to each position with less opposition. After deployment, they pushed their way towards the target but were met with resistance from the enemy as the Germans sniped down upon the Allies from clifftops and brought some of their mechanized units to bear. Overcoming the obstacles, the Allied forces were able to place explosives on target Beta while Charlie Squad broke through the German lines and placed a detonator on Delta. This forced the defenders to split between the two locations. The confusion among the Axis troops led to hesitation and a delayed response, allowing the Allies to destroy both targets. Using their momentum, the Allied troops pushed forward to take and destroy the next target. During this time, Charlie's squad came under intense pressure from a German counter-attack. So can you tell us what happened there? It was during this time that Sir Reginald was wounded, and for a short while he lay on the ground. German soldiers swarming all over him as the battle raged about him. And then, well, I, I guess he blacked out. He was never too sure how he ended up back at the drop zone, but... Well, I guess a stretcher bearer must have taken him back somehow. In any case, when he woke, I believe, they gave him a shot of morphine, put his rifle in his hand again, and sent him back out to join his fellows. Charlie's squad was well trained, and that training was critical in their assault on the last position, as he ordered his men to lay down smoke ahead of them, so as to cover their approach. This helped not only his squad, but the whole Allied attacking force by providing a thick screen against the enemy snipers and machine gun emplacements. This type of behaviour wasn't unusual, and knowing Sir Reginald like I do, you know he was never one of those snipers who would sit half a mile out taking pot shots. No, rather he was always right there with his squad and happy to get up close and personal. He told me about a little sidearm that he had that he was given to him by an American counterpart, although he didn't think it would do much against an assault rifle, but well, you might be surprised. I know this often meant he would catch a graze or two, but the squad's medic would be there with a shot of adrenaline in hand to get the squad up and moving forward. I think this is one of the reasons that his men respected him so much and would follow any of his orders. Something you can't say about many folks these days. In the closing stages of this day, Reg was again wounded, and as his squad tried to protect the last of the explosives that had been set against the counterattack of the German forces, they also had to deal with a wounded commander. So Jeremiah, tell us how that played out. Well, the boys pulled through, of course. They were a team and looked after one another. As such, the last of the artillery was destroyed. Reginald was patched up and the German forces forced to retreat. Job well done, I say. 